103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday morning, July 11th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes or Doubter5. And as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Vinny, I'll come help you. I'll be right there. Just give Daddy an hour. <laughs> Who is that? It's my cat. He's going crazy in the background. I say, you only have a cat. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, with us today, uh, also our guests are Doubtfire. Hello, Doubtfire. Hello, hello, hello. And George Buffalo. Welcome. From New York. Uh, Boudreaux from UK. Hello, everyone. George Brown, uh, Brooklyn, but he's in Tennessee with us and down there in Athens. Yes, good morning, everybody. And Dread Pirate Higgs, also from, well, out of the, out of the States. He's up in Canada. Welcome. Boy there. And a special guest this morning, um, Isaiah Diesel. Diesel. And where are you located? You're, you're in a, an out-of-the-country location, too, aren't yeah. you? I'm located in South Korea, so good evening, Anyeonghaseyo. South Korea, cool, very cool. International show right here. Anyeonghaseyo. <laughs> Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And what's our topic today there, Wombat? Today we're going to be introducing one of our new friends, Isaiah Diesel, and talking about should we be judged by our actions. But before we get into it, we have a full house of people, international show, I'm digging it. Let's all gather together for a moment of respect to appreciate this wonderful moment by leading it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. I'm going to dawn my holy colander. Give me a second. Go for it. From the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Oh, a red one this time. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, Think on these things. Raw. And that is from hey. Saul of Tarsus. Oh, in, uh, Lead us in a raw Philippians. man, Dread Pirate. Dread Pirate, where's our raw men? I oh, can't hear without us. Oh, we can't hear us. Oh, where's our raw men, Dread Pirate? Raw oh, men. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Can't leave that. Can't leave it. Got to get that bit. Okay, so guys, we have a really cool opportunity to introduce a new guest coming all the way from South Korea. That's that's a surprise for me. Anang sayo, Isaiah. Uh, okay, cool. I only know that and Kogi. Those are, and that and then a bunch of K-pop. And what else are you gonna do, right? But right. Uh, I want to crack into like everything that you're doing on there. But I just want to check in with everybody else on the show. Uh, and then we'll get to you. So, Boudreau, sure. haven't seen you in a while. How you been? What's going on with you? Also, I like your shirt. What's your shirt all about? Uh, run for ice cream. Uh, it was a, a 3K, so not a very long run, but in the hot, hot summer. Nice. You got ice nice. cream. When you oh, cool. It, so. I did, it with, did it with the kids. Nice. Uh, yeah. But, good time? Uh, good doing? time? Make good time? Yeah, yeah. I, actually, the race was, was canceled last year, but it's uh, going to happen uh, in about a week. Uh, again this year, so I'm looking forward to it. Fantastic. Trying, uh, trying to run again, but yeah. But yeah now, does, does, okay. the, does the dog ever go out with you on these runs? Because I think that'd be a wonderful opportunity. We have we have a new puppy. She's about eight months old, so we try not to run her too much because that's not great for. But she goes for miles, and she'll be a runner. I think she's nice. about fifty pounds too. So nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Scott, what's going on with you? And are you still on tour? How have you been? Oh man, I'm having a blast. I, I've been working again with the uh, new material that uh, Mike Greenlee and Deborah McGowan, the you know the Grammy songwriters, and 
just really thrilled about like these upcoming projects. You know, they're just, I don't know what to say. It's kind of like ineffable, man. <laughs> but yeah, it's having a great time with the music, all that good stuff. And um, also my, my uh, Exploring Epistemology channel, that's going really strong. And yeah, it's been really real, man. I dig it. I dig it. Keep up the love, man. Keep up the effort. You're doing the good, you're doing the real hustle and we appreciate it. The good stuff, putting out music, putting out good thought. Love it. George, the second one half coming all the way. You said you were from Athens. Did I hear that right? Or was this a different part of Tennessee that you're in? Where, where exactly are well, you located? No, I, I'm, I, I am exactly halfway between Ath between uh, Knoxville and Chattanooga. Does your, does your, your grass patch have a name? Oh if yeah, I was going to send you a Athens. letter. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Athens, Tennessee. Yes. How's and, life been down there? Um, so I'm. Well, I'm. I, uh, I have been exploring alternatives in computing. I've always been into into that. So um, I have been given a new, a new um, uh, laptop machine okay. to explore. And I, I work in Linux. I want to be really off of the commercial computing grid. I totally and get you. Why don't you just get an advocate? Why don't you just get an advocate at this point? <laughs> I don't even know what an advocate is. What is it? I will happily show you after this this conversation. Okay, there, okay. There are some but, powerful but in things. general, um, I, I'm very opposed to surveillance capitalism and surveillance on the net. So I take special uh, efforts to avoid being surveilled yes if they can't use it to get rid of climate change why do we have it in the first place right okay dread pirate i love that red colander was that a brand new one or is it only one that used for special occasions no that's uh, actually used for firefighting purposes <laughs> the uh, the red fire, the red fire colander in case uh, something burns on the stove okay uh, can, i don't we imagine can initiate it water very well right so how, how does that thing work is it, is it state powered? <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's okay. uh, it's just so people recognize the fact there's an emergency. So, so for videos um, of the show, you have a T-shirt that has some text on it. I want to know what that's all about. Yes. Demand evidence and think critically. That's what he says on the shirt. Love it. Dre yeah. how you been? What's going on with you? Good. Good. Uh, a couple of really good things. Uh, uh, recently, I think I mentioned it last week that Australia had been denied um, forming a, a religious organization or a nonprofit. Um, so we've started a campaign through our uh, international pastafarian captains conclave, mm. which is our international captains group, to uh, do a letter writing campaign to the Australian ambassadors to our our country okay. in support in support of uh, um, of. Uh, them being able to do as they wish, uh, just like anyone else. Um, and also, uh, we got together uh, um, y yesterday to talk about, um, I mentioned this before, the uh, World Truce 2021, which is this uh, initiative uh, that pastafarians around the world are looking to lead in order to form a delegation to the UN nice. and um, and request uh, a special day in November or two days, November 20th and 21st, to be a day of truce, just like the Christmas truce in uh, the First World War, very same sort of idea, but having it secular um, and, you know, led by Pastafarians. So do we have uh, other days of truce that are recognized right now, or is it... Is it a grab bag or outdated? What's going on? Yeah, I, I'm I'm not aware of one. I you know I I looked around and tried to see if there was anything official, but um, I I haven't seen anything. So okay. it'll be something new. Just a call for peace in November. Yeah. No, not peace. Peace. Or peace temporary is, peace. Peace is a yeah. Peace is a goal of a longer journey. Uh, right. So truce is the time that you get to sit down and have conversations. Peace it. is when you've done all that negotiating and understanding one another and, and coming to terms with uh, each other's differences. Uh, Got so it. Truce is just the time to contemplate those things. Okay. That's, that's actually really, really thoughtful. And I appreciate you telling me that particularly at a time like this, because there were a lot yeah. of things I was thinking about where it's like, peace seems almost improbable, but a truce as you're defining it now, does seem 
good. And there's always time for good conversation, I think, right? Well, and, and, and the thing is, if it does work out, you yeah. know, then we can ex expand it because, of course, next year will be 2022 and 2023. Oh, okay. So you yeah. expand on the idea that the truce becomes longer and longer, mm. giving more time for that reflection. I dig it. Yeah. George Buffalo with the tan, you look like a guy who spent some time on a boat, houseboat. What's going on with you? How you been? More from my gardening. Ah. But, uh, no, that, that went very well. And yeah. uh, Eric and his family shared in, in that. But I guess one that what I've done new very briefly is I uh, took a very interesting trip to Cherokee, North Carolina, at, uh, below Gatlinburg, mm -hmm. uh, to the middle of the Cherokee Indian Reservation, and I learned a lot about their culture and uh, nice. the you know, wonderful, peace-loving people. Uh, you see over here some artifacts that I brought back. Yeah. Why don't you talk to me about some of that stuff? Yeah. And a blow, a blow gun at the uh, down on the bottom. And okay. The so back up, of, back up. You just said peace loving people. And then you point at two <laughs> weapons of like, and there's this peace loving rifle. And here's this peace loving yeah. blow dart. Well, you're, 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 you're overthinking it. You're overthinking it. About 15% for for of their diet was meat. And they use both weapons, not as weapons, but as ways of sort of stunning their prey, which mostly birds, pheasants, and the like. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, that's what they were used for. Okay. Actually, the, the blowgun uh, uh, works, and, and it, but it's got a very mild impact, but it's enough to stun a uh, potential meal and uh, then go and grab it. And, but uh, it, it really wonderful history of those people. Uh, and, of course, they... They suffered uh, like so many of the American Indian tribes did, and they were forced off their land. Right. Uh, but enough of them stayed in the mountains so that uh, when it was time to establish the reservation or where folks came around to giving reservations, uh, they were there. And, and now they have a casino, so they're doing very well. Okay. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's hope for, for a long-lasting uh, wellness for a lot of the Indian yeah, let's hope they let, let's yeah, hope they keep Native control Americans. of the casino is the most important thing mm. i'll tell you this i went into a ted sporting good this weekend and i was expecting there to be sports equipment but it turns out ted sporting good is for sporting equipment which is not sports but hunting and that made me upset because yeah. <laughs> i was like where's your disc golf disc they're like we don't have them here i was like you have sports on the signs, like no, we do diff we do sporting, completely different thing. I'm like that ing, that or five. That was my weekend. How was yours? Oh, it was fine, uh, uneventful. Uh, it rained, so I didn't get to work out on the deck as much as I wanted to. Uh, just watch TV, play it on the computer. It just wasn't that much to it. Not that much to it. Nice and keeping nope. it simple. Okay, just trolling on the internet, making people angry, making making some memes. That's I do I do that as well, true. Okay, cool. And don't troll to... though. I, I, I take offense of, or take exception to the word troll. I don't troll. <laughs> <laughs> it's troll light or weak trolling, if anything, right? It's just, it's just little pokes and stuff like that get people thinking. Well, right? I answer questions and make points. <laughs> but I, I don't go on there just to raise uh, rage among people. Okay. Is that okay. what you kids call it these days? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I don't understand it. We're gonna have to ask Larry to explain the internet to us. But anyway, moment of truth. Isaiah Diesel, so happy to see you. Uh, would you mind taking some time to explain your entire life story in the next couple of minutes? Go for it. <laughs> well, um, thank you for having me on, Larry. Thank you. Larry was on my show, so um, I have a I have a podcast I do with an atheist man, and uh, but sometimes I do people one on one. So Larry came on, but um, I'm a former atheist, and I had a religious conversion about seven years ago. And I live in South Korea. I'm a missionary here. And um, thank you all for having me. We'll just, hey, we'll just stop it there. Yeah, where are you in South Korea? Uh, you know, like, what do you vibe about? What have you been up to since you've been down there? How's the Kogi? Talk to me. So currently, I'm right now in Seoul. But that's because I'm doing some, I'm helping out a church here. But I live at the bottom of South Korea, which is called Mokpo. And it's kind of like out in the countryside. So yeah. I moved from Seoul to go out there. And and I've been here about 10 years. My wife's Korean. I have a daughter who's Korean. So yeah, I love it living here. Cool. 
I spent a lot of summers in Korea myself. Um, a lot of really? time in, in Busan area. My, my whole family's military and there's a big base, as you know, in Seoul. Oh. And so a lot of the times we would spend it and the military base is very open. So like, I wouldn't even be surprised if you notice it because there are all the military there, but like Busan is nearby. Well, not nearby, but it's Southern and it has a ferry that takes you up to Japan, Fukuoka. And we'd spend time bouncing back and forth. Right. It's right. really, really actually. nice up there. Food is too small. The proportions are too small. Would you agree? Like when you get a food, you're like, it's only like the size of a calculator. And you're like, I'm supposed to eat this for a day. It's like, no, that's your three day meal. It's like, no, I can't eat this much. I need more food. Anything like that. What do you like about Korea? What do you hate about Korea? It's all right. You can be, you can, <laughs> from your perspective, what, what, well, what's your favorite things? What's the things where you're like, man, America, come on. I missed July 4th. What's going on? There are some things that are, you know, there's some cultural differences that's a bit of a trouble, but I think by and large, just I, I, prefer, I prefer living here to America because people here tend to be more communal minded. So they, they, they generally think about the good of society rather than the good of the individual. Whereas America, there's like a fixation on individual freedom. And so that just doesn't really drive well in my mind. But I love the food. I love the people. Yeah. You know? Okay. 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 And so, are you near Q, uh, Are you are you near Quan Ju? Yeah, actually, very, very near. Very near. Okay, I spent uh, a year and a half in Quan Ju in the military. Thank you for your service. Really appreciate it. Thank you for your service. Thanks. Yeah. My mom was a Vietnam veteran, but as an American here, um, I'm very grateful to the military people who serve. So, thank you. So, part of your mission, oh, sort of part of your missionary work. What's your daily schedule like? Could you take us through a typical day of a uh, Korean patriot missionary? Yeah, well, it's, it's been the first year down here, so it's been mostly just making connections. But I do teach English, and I also do talk to people online and just, you know, just generally being out and meeting people. So I'm still establishing things. To, it's been extremely difficult, obviously, because of corona. Mm. So almost all the activities I would normally be able to do, I can't do right now. So just trying to wait it out right now. It's a good question. How is Corona over in Korea? Hey, and Larry, what do you, what going ahead? Larry, what is, what's your uh, input? I'd just like to get back to something he said earlier that he used to be an atheist. Uh, what convinced you that, uh, that going to Christianity or believing in God, I mean, we're all atheists here and we are open-minded. So I was wondering what your evidence or your experience was that brought you back into the fold of religion. Uh, well, so about eight years ago, I was living with my friend in, and, and I took a trip from Greece over to Israel. And uh, while I was in Israel, I got this tattoo right here, which is a North Korean atheistic philosophy, which means Juche, it means self-reliance. So I got that tattooed on me in Israel. So I was pretty far off from being a, a Christian as you come. And amazingly, just four four months after um, I left, I left there. I was in my room, and Jesus Christ spoke to me uh, at the age of thirty two, and I gave my life to Him for the first time in my life. So, yeah. did did you actually hear a voice, or did, were you mo just moved, or what? No, I heard a voice. Did, okay, he spoke to did me. Did he appear to you? Did he appear to you? No, no, I just heard it. I know it sounds crazy, but Dread. I'm, I was, as I said, I was in Israel four months before getting tattoos and um, smoking weed and drinking. I was, religion was as far, uh, you know, Jesus Christ was the last thing on my mind. So, yeah. What were you going to say, Dred? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, um, so how did you know it was Jesus Christ? Oh, well, he told me. Oh. He said, I'm Jesus Christ. Yeah, so it's it's been a very interesting last seven years. You're on mute, uh, Ty. Weird comment. If if there was if he told you it was any other person, would you have the same standard to believe whatever the voice was? If they said like, "Hey, I'm George Carlin," or "Hey, or Muhammad. I'm, uh, I'm Muhammad," would you believe it then? Or like, "Hey, I'm Zeus." Actually, would you believe in Zeus? Why not? I mean. Why not? Um, some people want to ask me, like, what do I think about other people's experiences if they've heard from Muhammad or met Muhammad? And I'm like, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to get involved with anyone else's experiences. I can just talk about my experience. And 
um, that's what I experienced. So I'm not saying Muhammad doesn't exist, or I'm not saying Buddha isn't whatever out there. Like that, that's not what I do. I had this experience and it changed my life. And yeah, I'm, I'm a better person as a result of it. Yeah. I don't even doubt that you had the experience or that it was changing your life. I was just wondering about the veracity of believing whatever a voice in your head tells you just because it told you, does that make mm -hmm. any sense? Like, is there any possibility that I could have a voice in my head tell me that it's something that it's not that thing? Like, is that even possible? Yeah, certainly. George, yeah, I would Buffalo, Bar Buffalo, you just, out, you lifted your hand and then you walked away. Look at this guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, what's up? Oh, you're on mute, my friend. You're on mute, my friend. Still on mute, my friend, George Buffalo. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> For that's a radio a mic audience, he, yeah, he put yeah. himself on unmute and left the room. <laughs> I guess he had to say yes. Maybe to I could ask a question. Yeah, yeah. Scott, go for it. On that? Yeah, um, just, just this is an epistemic question. So what method would one use to distinguish between imagination and God speaking to them or a way to know the difference? Well, okay. So you speaking in general, um, in general, in general, what's a good yeah. way to know that a voice in your head is actually what that okay. voice is and compared to a so, voice in uh, Okay, so in general, I would say if he's able to confirm something externally, um, which he, it, it, I, can, I can only speak for my case, which he did multiple times. Uh, so for example, one of the times he used someone else to tell me ex one of the things that he told me, which was part of m multiple different things that he used to confirm what what I experienced, but I would say, yeah, some other kind of external, um, external confirmation that would, that would, that would be good. Uh, external okay. confirmation. Would you be open to doing one right now? Or does the voice only mean? talk to you? Like, could we, could you externally ask this voice to confirm something for you right now? Or does it only work when it's convenient to the voice? So just let me tell you how that works in my own personal life. I don't know. Maybe there are other people who can, but um, in the first six months afterwards, or maybe about the first five months, I, I believe he spoke to me about six times. And then I literally did not hear one peep for five and a half years until I got onto the mission field. Mm -hmm. And then when I got onto the mission field, he spoke to me again. And now it's been an entire year where I've not heard from him. So. So difficult um, to test. Get the I, I, I never know when he's going to speak to me, so I have no idea. Dread Pirate. Dread, you're on mute. Uh, yeah, so I, I was wondering um, if there was anything that you can think of that would disconfirm your belief that what you heard was what you heard. Probably not, honestly. Um, it's been seven years. And mind you, Prior to this, like my parents are ministers, I went to Bible college. I became an atheist while I was at Bible college. I got all the world religions tattooed on me later on. And I was even served as a missionary for some time. But like, so I did all the things on the outside, but I didn't have an experience with Jesus Christ. So at the age of 32, after that, it just, it was a life changing experience. It just, sure. I mean, even. Yeah, even if even if I found out it was a lie, I'd still want to believe it because it was so drastically changing on my life. For example, oh, is I? It's a short show. Yeah. I just want to make sure we get to Scott's question. But it sounds sure. like at least so far, it's unfalsifiable. You want to believe it. Your parents were missionaries, and uh, uh, what was it? It's, it's sporadically testable. It's, it's utilitarian and yeah. sporadically testable. Scott, what's your what's your uh, questions before we head out to the break? I was just going to throw this out for some of our um, Christian listeners um, and others that I know listen in, at least go back to the show. So there's a lot of Christians that will say, well, you know, Jesus doesn't speak to people like that anymore. That's not scriptural. And then they'll say, if you heard a voice and, and the voice confirms things externally, that's the devil, man. How do you respond to that? Well, first of all, um, my family, when I told them what happened, they did make me seek counseling after. 
And so I did go to counseling for a year and, and I've definitely had a lot of people tell me I'm crazy, um, that I'm a liar and so on and so forth. It, even a lot of Christians, I have told a lot of Christians and I have heard a response that says like basically what you said. So if it was a devil, then I mean, I don't, I don't have any way to confirm it was, or it wasn't a devil or it wasn't some kind of alien who was shooting audible sounds at me, some kind of sound waves. Sure. But um, I don't have any way to confirm that. I just, I know what happened. Um, yeah. So no I, way to confirm. I, I That's totally fine. From that one way or the other, if it was a no devil question. or another, you know, because if, if you're a Christian and they say like, okay, Muhammad speaks to you, whatever they say, oh, that's like a devil or a demon. Well, I don't know that Islam is the right way. And the Jesus voice was just trying to keep me away from the one true religion, which is Islam. So I, I don't know that one way or the other. He is. Isaiah, Isaiah well, I'll ask you this one last thing. Why were you an atheist? Would you mind like describing that? Well, part of it had to do with suffering abuse, um, like sexual abuse as a kid. And so that, that made me have some kind of uh, natural resentment towards, um, I don't know, some kind of being out there, but whatever creator. So I was already that. But then when I went to Bible college, it, it was during the, the Clinton impeachment and they were, they were making fun of Bill Clinton. And they were saying things like, you can't be a Democrat and a Christian. And my mom was a Democrat and Christian. So just those experiences. And then I was in love with a girl. She went on a missions trip to Indonesia and she got bit by a snake and died. And um, just like the last month I was there, I just became an atheist. So just a combination of lots of different things. So one, I'm sorry for the trauma that you've had in your life, especially the sexual trauma. I mean, nobody should go through yeah. that. Um, I'd be interested if you want to ask us any of the reason, any of the questions that we asked you, particularly like, why are we atheists or what it take for us to believe, uh, claims if, even if we did have a voice in our head speaking, but unfortunately we're at the bottom of the half hour, Larry, you're going to have to take us out and then bring us back in again. Talking with okay. Isaiah Diesel. All right. This is the digital free thought radio hour on WOZO radio, 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday morning, July 11, 2021. Let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, for just a moment. Founded in 2002, we're in our 19th year. ASK has over 1,000 members, and we have weekly Zoom meetings during COVID, and we're still doing those, but we now have our in-person meetings starting at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria in Knoxville's Old City, out on the patio. We're there every Tuesday evening after work, say from 5.30 to 8. You can also find ASK online on Facebook, on meetup.com, or just go to knoxvilleatheist.org. Uh, by the way, if you don't live in Knoxville and you still go to, you can still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start one. Start one. Start one. All right. And where do we want to pick up there, Wombat? All right. So we were talking to Isaiah Diesel about uh, some things involving his path from um, um, his identification as an atheist to his identification as a Christian. Is that fair? Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, he's currently a missionary in Korea doing some good work there and, and, and helping out, I imagine, during COVID. Um, we appreciate the work that you're doing. What we'd like to be able to do is have a chance to um, have the questions that we had asked you sent back to us. And so we made a, mm -hmm. like, a really short list about, you know, um, what made you an atheist? Um, is it important to have beliefs that are falsifiable? Is personal experience reliable? How would you confirm a voice in your head? Why is it important to have high standards of evidence? We, we don't want to just put you on the plate. We'd hopefully like to share um, our answers as well. And I actually start with a roundtable question on why are you an atheist? And we can start even with Boudreaux. Boudreaux, why are you an atheist? Or why did you become an atheist, if anything? Uh, yeah, mostly just wasn't convinced of, of what was being told. And of course, I was you know, brought up Catholic, as we've talked about in the past, but um, it just didn't sound... Uh, believable, uh, and, and any of the other flavors as, you know, all, all similarly, uh, you know, kind of unbelievable. So I just not, not convinced. Um, okay. and you know, and it, it gave me comfort. I felt better about it because I always had these doubts anyway. So 
Well, interesting. You know, much like Isaiah. Yeah, I've, I've felt, I don't know, like a better person. Uh, yeah. So nice. Dread Pirate, why did you become an atheist? Um, pretty much the same thing. It, I've always had a scientific bent uh, and sort of an investigative um, proclivity. Uh, so, and I was actually uh, working towards being a, a Catholic priest. Um, but wow. as I, the more I investigated, the more I learned uh, outside of what is generally taught the common person with respect to the religion. Generally, it's cherry picked so that the most favorable aspects of um, Catholicism, for instance, are the ones that um, are put out there mostly for the flock. And as I investigated more in a more studious fashion, um, the more I realized that the contradictions were uh, just overwhelming. And then, of course, my investigation spread to other uh, consideration of other religions mm. and, the, uh, and the conflicts or the fact that they're all mutually exclusive. And the additional fact that over the, you know, 100,000-year history of humankind, uh, we 99% of all religions are, are no longer in existence. Sure. Um, so it just seems like, to me, it was, it just became glaringly um, apparent to me that uh, there was something wrong with that. So. And I do want to just make a distinction here, and perhaps this is something that I, I should have done way earlier. But when I say atheist, I don't mean person who believes that there is no God. I just mean someone who doesn't believe in a God. And or doesn't, doesn't have sufficient evidence. To, to be convinced that a God actually exists, right. which is a nuanced statement, but it's a very, very important one because we're not making the claim that no God exists. We're making the claim that we don't believe in any God claim. So it's not an issue of we know that there's no God. It's that we don't believe people who say that there is a God. And so that we are asking for evidence to be convinced that that's true. And until then, we don't believe. It's a lack of belief. It's not a statement mm -hmm. that we know that there is no God. Just making that point. Scott, why are you an atheist? So I guess the reason I'm an atheist is um, I decided one day to be very honest with myself mm. and others and also be... Um, genuine um in in my beliefs so i couldn't i did i did i never had like a personal revelation from god and reading the bible reading the quran um exploring hinduism um it seems like the method that people use to get at those beliefs are all the same it's faith it's um taking the, the what is written as gospel or as the truth. So, but they all come to different beliefs, even within the religions themselves. So it all kind of created a lot of doubt in me. And so I left Christianity as a result of it. I could, I just got to the point where I couldn't be honest about it, or I couldn't be dishonest and lie to myself and others anymore. And so I just decided to be more honest with myself and, and, uh, you know, live my life accordingly. Um, so for me, it just seems like I cannot tell the difference between a hidden God and one that doesn't exist. Mm. Until I can, I'm just going to withhold belief either way. I like that. Uh, obviously, I like that. <laughs> You're talking to the choir right now. I'm going to actually throw it up to Brooklyn George. You're going to be an interesting case, Isaiah. I think this will be an interesting story. George Brown, why are you an atheist and why are you still an atheist? <laughs> Well, uh, first of all, um, I was simply brought up without God, right. and I was brought up without religion. These, these uh, two things were simply not present in my household. Hmm. Um, you know, my, my parents were atheists, and I think each one of them had their own reasons, and I'm not privy to know what, exactly what they were, but... Um, they were both, I would say, free thinkers. And um, at times we attended the Brooklyn Society for Ethical Culture, which was a humanist organization. And um, I was dragged off to humanist lectures, I think from the age of four, when I didn't understand a bit of it. 
and in a way I still don't. So my, um, my, my cultural background is Jewish. And so it's like I'm an outside, I'm a double outsider in this culture in the United States. Sure. <clears throat> this is a very Christian oriented country. Sure. And um, so uh, the belief system simply does, has never made sense to me. Okay. George mm-hmm. Buffalo, listen, I know you're going to say, I know you're going to say something scientific. I want, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to pressure you not to mention anyone whose name begins with the letter S or mention any curves of Gaussian nature in this explanation. But why are you an atheist, my friend? Also take yourself off mute. You've had the whole thing backwards since last half of the show, the whole half of the show. There you go. So just hit the mute button again. There you go. There you go. Nice. Okay. So, so I, I, I've always been a scientist, but even before that, I've not been an adherent. I'm an independent. I'm not an adherent. I like that distinction very much. And uh, so that's where I come from. I always have. And I like to see the evidence, just like Dred's shirt says. Um, And if there's something that I don't understand, I want to have a path toward understanding it. Or um, I'm not going to buy in. I'm not an adherent. Nice. Very cool. Uh, Larry, I'm buckled up. You ready to do this? Yeah, I'll, I'll try <laughs> to keep it short. Save some time for me. See? <laughs> All right, I'm buckled up. Larry, why are you an atheist? <laughs> well, I was born into a Baptist family, so I was raised Christian. But from an early age, it was mainly the outrageous claims uh, that made me skeptical. You know, talking snakes and donkeys, parting of the waters, the ark and the global flood, Tower of Babel, virgin births, angels, etc. But later on, I mean, I went through high school and and the Navy and then got into college before I ever started really questioning it. Uh, I met an atheist and and during conversations with her uh, and studying anthropology, physics and geology in college, which gave me the ascent of man, uh, the age of the earth and and the uh, how the universe is, is works working. Basically, I lost all belief in anything supernatural at all souls, sin, heaven, hell, all of that. And I've been an atheist for now for almost 50 years. Oh, very, very cool. Very cool. Very cool. And look, Larry didn't even mention souls. Eric didn't mention Sam Harris. George Buffalo didn't mention Gossing Curves. You guys are all doing wonderful. Keeping my blood pressure low. I really appreciate that. Isaiah is looking a little confused. Sorry. There's just, these, there's these buttons that everybody keeps hitting all the time. I'll do mine real quick. And then uh, we'll get some feedback from Isaiah. Uh, simply put, uh, my, the reason why I'm an atheist is because I've raised my standard of evidence for the things that I deeply care about and, uh, really for everything, really, honestly, and for the things that I deeply am concerned with and the things that I desperately want to know more about, I've raised my standard of evidence such that when I think about things that are generally mundane, like, did I go to the gym today? Am I a black guy? Does my mom love me? I can have it. I can find enough evidence to support that and be reasonable with it. But for greater claims that are a bit more complicated, like does a, uh, a super supreme being exist over everything or can, is it is possible for someone to break the laws of physics to feed a bunch of people fish or offer dietary advice through a talking snake? I get a little more, I need a little bit more evidence to support, to support those claims and, and not to be cheeky, but it's, it's so, it's essentially just, I haven't been convinced that those claims are even feasible for me to begin belief in them. Not to say that they haven't existed. It's just that they are not an option for me to begin believing in until I have better evidence to support it. In fact, I found that there are much more mundane explanations for a lot of the things that Christianity or other religions may claim to be uh, the answer for that I found explained much more better in secular fashion. And in set in a, in a simple sense, in the most simple sense, I had a lot of religious answers, but I was desperately looking for explanations and I didn't get any of them from religion. And so I was looking for a way to s- figure out, okay, well, what's the best way for me to be able to sp- take away things that are true. I mean, take away things that are not true 
and keep the things that are true. And I found the best way to separate the two is to have a high standard of evidence. And if what I believe in is true, it'll withhold, it'll stay in there. It'll stay in that standard. It'll, I'll still believe it. But if it turns out to be not true, or if I just don't have enough evidence to support it, I can put it in a separate category, which doesn't mean that it's not true. It just means I don't know yet. And I'm comfortable with their um, uh, with God being in that box. Cause it feels like a much more intellectually honest position for me to just say, I don't have enough evidence to believe in a God, but I can have a high standard of evidence. And if God ever wants to meet that, I'll, I'll be ready to believe it. But until then it's up to the people who do believe in a God to, to, to present that burden of evidence to me. It's not my job That's to reasonable. use my standard and reach out for other people. A lot to explain. Isaiah, what are your thoughts on everybody? Well, you know, I have three different atheist co-hosts, so I mean, you guys really haven't said anything I haven't heard before. So, I mean, I'm familiar with those arguments, and uh, for many years I was an atheist slash agnostic. Um, I could just tell you on a personal level, kind of like a really big, uh, a really big uh, crack in the ceiling was going to North Korea and seeing the oppression of the North Korean people firsthand and try to balance that out in, in my atheism. And, and I really couldn't, I really couldn't find the proper reasoning to condemn that inside of what I was believing. Could you, so could you explain I, that just a little bit? Because it sounded like well, at least in this, in, at least in this example, you're saying atheism comes with a codification of some sort of morals that will allow you to look at subjugation of people and come to a realization that it's wrong or right. Whereas in very much in the context of this conversation, atheism is just a lack of belief in a higher or in a God claim. It does right. not come with a set of morals to come up with a judgment on how people should be well, treated. Uh, I'm telling you just from my own perspective, you guys can, you guys can have your own, um, how you come to your own conclusions on that one. But because I believed in evolution and I believed that, um, in a survival of the fittest, I also saw that Kim Jong-un in his mind, actually is his father, Kim Jong-il, believed that he was more highly evolved than these uh than the korean people there and he was using them as i would use a sheep or a goat or whatever and i was just trying to reconcile that inside of my atheism and beliefs in evolution and i just i couldn't do it That's yeah i wouldn't be able to do it either i don't yeah. find a faculty in there are atheists who believe in religion or evolution and the ones who, who don't um and I would say it's not a vehicle to determine how to treat people. It's just a lack of belief in God. Hey, Dr. Five, right. what do you got to say? Well, I was just going to say uh, his proximity to North Korea may have influenced his, his thoughts there. But <laughs> I mean, if he had lived uh, near Scandinavia or uh, Holland or any of those countries there or um, predominantly anywhere in, in uh, Europe, uh, it was becoming more and more atheistic, uh, Ch China, uh, you know, any of those other ones uh, who who don't have uh, uh, overarching uh, oppression of their people, uh, who are also atheists, uh, the countries that actually support the people, socialistic countries that uh, take the, the welfare of their, their people to very much to heart. Yeah. Uh, it may have been, I mean, well, how would you have felt about that if you did lived in that proximity instead of one that, I mean, they're not using atheism per se to oppress their people. They may be using evolution as an excuse to, or that particular person did, mm -hmm. but any excuse in an in a argument like that can, you know, cannot weather uh, just want to throw out a silly thing. I think over half the people on this call are over 52. Is that accurate? <laughs> if that is, if that is the case. So most of the people who are on this call right now were born in a time when black people couldn't even marry white people legally in this, in the country that I'm in right now. And my mom, it was illegal for her to attend the school that I eventually got my PhD in just because of the color of her skin. So like there's been subjugation. We don't have to look across seas to find subjugation. I know we're an international show, but I can look at my window and still see attitudes of people who mm -hmm. living through generational changes that are stymieing and inhibiting progressive change that are necessary to just, you know, allow mm -hmm. black lives to matter as much as everybody else's in right, this right. in the state that i'm in right now but i'm not i don't need an atheist perspective to see that as a bad thing like i have a completely i have a set of morals on just humanism or just how people should be treated with a, with a get egalitarian values that 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 complement if anything my impression of what it means to be uh, a, a well 
a good person in society and, and treat people with well-being. But it has nothing to do with my atheist perspective. It is my atheism is just an answer to just one question, and that's whether or not mm -hmm. do I believe that a God exists or not. And it's not that. It's no for me. It's yes for some other people, and that's it. And then everything else is up to me to decide. I saw a lot of hands raised. We're going to go Dread Pirate first. What's up? Um, I just wanted to mention that uh, it, when you were bringing up, uh, you know, segregation um, in America, um, I think it's worth noting that most of most of the improvements, uh, societal improvements, are of the as the result of secular uh, secular values, um, mm. changes in, in secular values and humanistic uh, values, um, because certainly. Uh, my experience or in my understanding of history is that it's always been the religious contingent that represses change yep. uh, in favor of their conservative values uh, and that uh, through humanism and secularism, these things change and, and we have a better society. To it's really hard it. to get rid of slavery when it's promoted in a in whole book. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Doctor Five and then Scott. Doctor Five. Well, again. I mean, if he's gonna if he's gonna look at a country and say, well, that's an atheistic country and they oppress their people, how you need to look back through history and see how religion has been used to oppress people. I mean, um, I mean, I, I've got a whole blog page. I think I sent it to you one time that you could look at what's what religion and superstition is responsible for. But I mean, just looking at the Inquisition, like 400 years of human oppression uh, in the name of Jesus, um, you've got to take that into account as well, I would think. Yep. Scott, what do you got? Yeah, I, I just wanted to make sure we weren't talking past Isaiah here because I think it, it you know, I may be wrong, but I think basically what Isaiah is saying is not that Christians can't do bad things or Christians can't, um, you know, impose bad policies in countries. I think what he's saying is that if your grounds for morality is evolution, then it should be no surprise that you have a North Korea. I agree. And so that's, I think that's mainly what he's, he was trying to figure out in his atheism that it provided no um, answer for with regards to evolution and naturalism. But I would just, to, to maybe push back on that idea to maybe help you understand um, is that empathy and being humanistic is also a product of evolution if evolution is true. Hmm. Because we see animals being empathetic towards their common, um, you know, Sure. Uh, tribe or animals like apes and dolphins and, and actually cross species. cross species too. Correct. So um, it seems that while evolution does, um, you know, kind of promote um, in many cases tribalism, like and this is you know kind of seen in countries like North Korea, in an America and other Christian countries as well. Um, it also promotes um, empathy and, you know, a pathway to morality. And, you know, then we get into a whole other conversation about subjective morality versus objective morality and blah, blah, blah. But I just wanted to put that out there to let you know that I think I understand what you're saying, Isaiah. Can I? I yeah. So, so I do want to clarify something like I, I that would like experience. To Isaiah, if you don't mind, I'd just like to clarify what Scott says, then we'll leave it to you, and then we'll close out the show. Is that, is that okay? Sure. So you'll have the final words for sure. So, yes, I agree with Scott's point. Yeah, uh, evolution makes for a really bad moral barometer because it doesn't really offer any, um, I would say, guidance in terms of how to treat people or how to assess behavior, right? It's just simply what it is, and it's trial and error, and it's, it's, a, it's a fairly murky system. Um, Atheism, likewise, is not a moral system or a moral codification of any code. It is simply an answer to one question, do you believe or not in a God? Are you convinced or not? And so what I do find appealing behind Christianity is not only is it an answer on whether or not a God exists, but it also comes with a set of morals and a set of dogma to follow, which can make things a lot more clear. And the thing would be not so much for us to, to assess whether or, that, whether or not that's a good moral code. It's just an issue of, for us. Are we convinced that that is one that's given to us by a God or not? And if we're not convinced, then it's just 
another set of morals that are provided to us by you know most likely people and then society which of, yeah. by society and is then if that's the case is that even the best one or has society come up with an even better codification of rules for us to follow and then what would be the better set for the best consequences of behavior and i feel like i have found a higher standard of principles to follow than one that's been codified in a book multiple thousands of years ago that i know for a fact has actually been used to propagate a lot of harm and 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 distrust among people today and ones that we're still we're getting by, by today i know we're getting close to the show time isaiah yeah. final words what do you got we'll give it to you yeah your criticisms about religion like i share the same exact um concerns and i am i have a degree in history so i definitely understand that uh my experience in north korea i'm not saying god exists because of that um that was a crack in the ceiling that just made me stop and scratch my head and say can I really rectify these two conflicting beliefs that I have? And I just, I couldn't internally. I'm not saying you guys can't, I'm not saying atheists are immoral or bad people because and the, peop, the the secular humanists I've met by and large almost almost, almost consistently every time been more moral than the Christians that I've personally encountered. Especially now when I saw in the last four years, the Trump, the Trump, the Trumpsters, who were going along with some very vile stuff. And it seemed like it was the secular people who were standing up and voicing themselves more on the stuff that they were doing that was blatantly anti-religious uh, and anti-Christian. So yeah, I'm not, was, that was not intended to bash you guys, so you guys lack morals. Uh, it was just a matter of, I was presenting my own experience. So yeah, thank you guys for hearing me out. Sure, thanks for hearing us out. Yes. Um, getting down toward the end, uh, Wombat? Oh, Dread. Dread, go ahead. Like close? You're on mute. Yeah, I, I just had a, a comment here from a Data's Trading Room. Um, you know, when you talk about North Korea, or Korea uh, of course, many of you ought to know, I've heard in the news that um, what happened here at residential schools in Canada uh, so he makes the comment, how about what's going on in Canada now with the Catholic Church, uh, who oversaw essentially the deaths of over 1,500 Indigenous children. That we know of so far. That we know of so far. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly not limited to fascist countries. Um, religion uh, sometimes has foul effects in more liberal, uh, liberal societies. So. I also was fortunate enough to spend a lot of time in Sweden too. And I can tell you that's a very atheistic society. That's where I actually came out as an atheist. It was so open for me to be able to do that. And for every North Korea that's presented as one extreme, I can just as easily point to Sweden and be like, look, but this is the exact same thing. And everybody here is happier. And if not, the, at least the metal music is fantastic right off the vine. So good. So good. Mm -hmm. All right. Bujo, what would you recommend? We oh, Isaiah, what's up? What's up? Yeah, just last thought, because um, I, I recently had was preparing for a debate with an atheist, and um, I looked into all those Norwegian um, countries. Or, or Why'd you quote Scandinavian. Norwegian? They're totally Norwegian. What, what, what's Scandinavian, the... Uh, Scandinavian. Swedish. And and they... Almost all of them, with the exception to the Netherlands, which I went to, had at least a 75% uh, rate of belief in God. So this idea that they're like all or most atheists is a total... Uh, it's just not true. Interesting, I'd like to see your source. I on that. live there. <laughs> so it would be interesting. I can show you my world country factbook. too. But yeah, world anyway. factbook. Every one of those countries, were at least seventy-five percent, either Lutheran or Catholic, or uh, so. Yeah, this it's, there's a myth that they're mostly atheists. It's a uh, twenty-five percent of them. Interesting. Yeah. Even Sweden. Um, I'd like to see the source. CIA, yeah, hey, go to CIA.gov world world factbook. I would love yeah, for you to have the same standard for these numbers that you're saying than for the God voice that's in your head. Cause you seem very eager to come up with these citations and quotes for the statistical ambiguity that we have, but mm -hmm. for the idea that a God could talk to you and say, Oh yeah, I am Jesus, by the way. And you will believe it face value. There's a discordant lack of similar standards there, but maybe we can talk about that more in the future. Boudreaux, what do you have? Is there anything for you? Uh, are you talking anything to check out? Or, yeah, or yeah, yeah. Check out. What's up? I, I did want to uh, point out, this is maybe a bit silly, but everyone's looking for things to occupy their time. There's a Netflix show 
called Manifest that I just got sucked into. And Isaiah, I think you'd like the premise of it because it's actually all about callings, like hearing voices and having them fulfill these things uh, to, 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 you know, almost pass a test or something. So it's, it, it's actually it manifest. Yeah. A bunch of people were on a plane and the plane disappeared for five and a half years and then came back. But anyway, just my point, I think with it, it's, it's a fun, entertaining show, but I think the, the interesting part about it is there's a lot of conversations about, you know, you hear these voices, how can I trust that you heard that voice? Yeah. And then the, the trick of the show is they actually come true. So they hear a voice and it says, there's a kid buried here. They dig it up. There's a kid. And they're like, well, did you put the kid there? No, no, no. I heard the voice and it gets into a really interesting, I don't know. There, there's some evidence. To- All of a sudden he's under arrest for murder. <laughs> Right, right, right. And I'm sorry, we ran out of time on the show, so Larry, why don't you just take us out? Okay, um, let me get to my point. Um, this has been the Digital Freethought Radio Hour. Um, be sure to check out the digitalfreethought.com slash blog. Be sure to click on that blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. Uh, if you're interested, I have a book out there called Atheism, What's It All About? It's available on Amazon. Uh, if you have any questions for the show, send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. And if you're a member of a clergy, you're a preacher, pastor, or priest, but no longer believe in the claims of religion, there's a group for you to help. It's called The Clergy Project. Go to clergyproject.org for more information. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when you they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye, everybody. See you. Uh, bye, 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 bye. Who's hell am I going to? So I heard a voice in my head that told me atheism was true. <laughs> <laughs>